Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cozy, cozy little corner of the internet. I'm Penn, today I'll be reading the first day of our 25 days of, of Christmas challenge. Uh, these are all Bingo Show Dogs books, just so you know. Uh, the first day's prompt is, Character A and Character B, sworn enemies, are chosen to prepare a Christmas party. Here's a summary. It's Atsushi's first Christmas in the Armed Detective Agency, and he's been... And he's been tasked to prepare the Christmas party. The only problem is is that he has to prepare it with Octagawa. Rompo and Daza have a bet going if the two of them get together, Rompo knows everything. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this and let's get into the book. Day 1, Shinsokoku. What? Atsushi yelled as Daza told him the news. In what world would that ever end well? Atsushi continued the question as Darzai stood in front of him with a small smirk on his face. Atsushi sighed a moment later, trying to wrap his head around all of this before speaking again. And Kunikita approved of this, he asked as he looked up to Darzai, trying to understand his reasoning. At this, Darzai chuckled lightly as he walked up to Atsushi and placed a hand on his shoulder, giving him a knowing grin. Kunikita did approve of this, don't worry, it'll work out. Anyway, you two need to work together to keep the agency and the Port Mafia from going to war again. At this, after she sighed, collapsing onto his work chair. He knew better than to question the bandage man, but that still left him with questions. Mostly, mostly just questions about why after she had to work with Akutagawa yet again, and why this time did they have to come up with a Christmas party. And why they had to come up with a Christmas party. Of all the... Of everything Darzai has made me do, this has got to be the worst, Atsushi whispered to himself as he gets up from his seat. Is that all you wanted to talk to me about, Darzai? At this, Darzai, lets it, Darzai nods, letting Atsushi continue. Then I'll be heading home. You really didn't need to hold me back after work just to talk about this to me. You didn't need to hold me back after work just to talk about this with me. Sighing, Atsushi started to walk out the office, stopping just before he exited the door when he heard Darzai call out to him. Just remember, the agency needs you to do this. Darzai said with a firm tone, giving Atsushi a slight nod, telling him it was now okay to leave. Atsushi shook his head as he walked into the hallway, sighing as he walked down the stairs. When Atsushi got home, he opened the door to see Kyoko cooking. His whole body relaxed as he stepped into the small apartment as he took his shoes off. That smells good, Kyoko. What are you making today? Atsushi asked with a small smile on his face, momentarily forgetting the stress of working with Akutagawa. Kyoko turned to look at, turned to face Atsushi with a smile on her face as she answered, "I'm making your favorite, chasuke." She then turned back to the stove where she was cooking the salmon to put on top of the rice. After she smiled widely as he work, walked further into the apartment, the two of them had a small conversation before the kettle finished boiling and Kyoko assembled everything together. Itakimasu, Itakimasu, Kyoko and Atsushi say before they start digging into their meal, both having wide smiles on their faces. It was quiet for a minute as they started to eat before they start their small talk about how their days went. I went with Kenji to his hometown today, Kyoko said with a small smile on her face as she recounted her day. There was a small problem with a gang running through his town. We're lucky we finished the mission within the day. Atsushi smiled as he listened to Kyoko talk about her day. After Kyoko had finished talking about all the details of her mission with Kenji, she looked up at him curiously before speaking up again. You were home a bit late today. Did you have to stay late at the agency? Kyoko asked before looking back down at her, to her food as she ate. Atsushi was frozen in place as he heard Kyoko's question. The memories of Daza talking to him just before he left work, along with the realisation that he had to work with Akutagawa again. Atsushi groaned before he, before he continued to eat. He knew he couldn't talk about this to Kyoko. It would probably bring up some bad memories from her time in the Port Mafia. So instead, he just stayed quiet. Kyoko sighed when Atsushi stayed quiet. She knew enough to know something was wrong, but not enough to tell what was wrong. You can tell me what happened, Atsushi, she said softly as she reached over, over the table and grabbed his hand. 
Atsa, she stopped in place when their hands connected, and he sighed. I can't talk about this to you, Kyoka. I don't want to bring up any memories. Atsa, she struggled over his words before continuing. All you need to know is that I've been pinned with planning this year's Christmas party. He looked up at K- to Kyoka with a small smile before he started to eat again, softly moving Kyoka's hands off his own. Kyoka sighs but realises she won't be able to get any more out of him so she drops the subject. After the two of them finish eating, Atsushi washes up the dishes as Kyoka goes to watch the TV. Once Atsushi knows she can't hear him, he sighs as he starts to think about how he is going to survive working with Octagawa on something that didn't involve fighting. The two had almost developed a, a system for missions that included fighting, but this... This was a whole nother beast. As Atsushi started to declutter his mind, something came to mind. Something that had been that he had been thinking about almost every mission on almost every mission of Octagawa and even between missions sometimes for the past couple of months. He had the urge just he had the urge to stay with him longer, some instances instances even wanting to hug him. Atsushi tried to shake the thought off as he normally did but it wasn't leaving like it would, normally would. The very idea of Octagawa used to repulse him, but now it seemed like he could never get enough of the man. Atsushi she shook his head harshly, stopping when his head was sh- stopping when he felt slightly dizzy. He tried to show any kind of hate he could fo- he could form for the mafioso when he was around the others, but it was getting harder and harder to do with him thinking of Octagawa more lately. He especially tried to show his hatred when Kyoka was around, but with Atsushi starting to with Octagawa starting to show up in his streams about a month ago, he knew, he didn't know how much longer he could f- hold up his facade. Atsushi sighed as he zoned back into a reality to see that he had already done the dishes and he was now just staring at the empty sink. What's happening to me? He questions himself quietly before taking the gloves off and making his way to his room. It wasn't much of a room. In fact, it was actually just a wardrobe etched into the wall. But it was fine. But he was fine with it, especially since it meant Kyoka could use the main area to sleep in with some sense of privacy. As she grabbed his phone and made his way over, made his way over saying a quick goodnight to Kyoka, claiming that he needed an early night's sleep. With the door closing, Atsushi turned on the little light he installed on the side of his wardrobe as he sat, as he sat down on the thin yoga mat he used as a mattress before unlocking his phone and opening the generic search engine that came with, that came with it and tried typing a few things into, in, into the search bar. How do I start thinking about my enemy? That result came up with a WikiHow article. Reading it didn't help much since it was only talking about enemies in the negative sense. Atsushi sighed as he tried a few more entrance, entries into the search engine, only to get the same result. He was about to give up for the night when he had the, uh, to, and go to sleep when he had an idea. What does it mean to, what does it mean to think about your enemy? This gave a lot more questions than, this gave him a lot more questions than answers as he looked down the titles of the articles. It was definitely different to what he had been getting, but he wasn't expecting it to say love all over his screen. Atsushi clicked on the first link, hoping it wasn't what he thought it was. He sighed in relief when he read the first sentence. It was an, The article was just about how to respect your enemies and how to treat them like a human, which Atsushi, Atsushi coincidentally thought that Octagawa needed to read. This, needed to read. Chuckling to himself, he decided to turn off his phone and for the night and put it on charge before ter- going under his duna cover and turning the lights off and closing his eyes for the night. Atsushi sighed as Zazai gave him Octagawa's number, looking up at Zazai one last time to get out of this. Zazai, please. He started off trying he started off trying to think of the right words to keep hating Octagawa. You have no clue how much he wants to kill me. That's what she ended up saying as he looked at Darzai with the biggest puppy eyes he could manage. But when Darzai laughed, he knew he had no chance of getting out of this. 
You gotta do this for the agency, Atsushi, he said with a slight chuckle. Besides, all of us are business with uh, are busy with our missions, so even it, so no one else could do it even if we wanted to. Atsushi Daza's smile grew slightly as he answered, before walking out the door of the office. Anyway, I've got a new method of suicide to try. Atsushi, finish writing my report, would ya? The bandaged man called out as the door closed behind him. Atsushi just sighed. He he was sure that this was this was illegal somehow, but he was grateful nonetheless for something to get his mind off of the threatening man. And at this point, he just wanted wanted a distraction. So he, the longer he could delay it, the better. Opening his computer, he typed in his password before opening the page of Darzai's report that he hadn't even bothered to start. Atsushi just shook his head before, but just before he was about to start typing, Rampo sp- spoke up. Call up Octagawa now, Atsushi. You can do Darzai's report later. Atsushi looked up from his computer to see Rampo staring at him before a- and before a- and before Atsushi could respond, the elder of the two spoke up again. I know you're trying to delay talking to Octagawa, the man states plainly before continuing. I want to hear the call to Atsushi, he said as he tossed the- Atsushi's phone to him. Atsushi stared at the phone for a moment, debating on questioning how he got a hold of Atsushi's phone or not. He looked up confused at Rampo. He looked up confused, Rampo answering his unspoken question with a slight smirk. I got it when Darzai snatched your phone when you walked in. Atsushi just sighs, not ready to unpack all of that, as he opens his f- phone and types Octagawa's number in, looking up at Rampo, unsure of how to talk to with him in the room. Rampo just sighs as he gestures for Atsushi, Atsushi to hurry up. The younger sighs again as he presses the as he presses the call button as, and and puts the phone to his ear. The phone rings multiple times and just as Atsushi thought it was about to go to vo- voicemail, Octagawa answers. Hello, the mafioso said as he answered asked as he answered. His tone al- his tone softer than normal. Atsushi was about to answer him when Rumpo made the dis- made the made a gesture for him for to put the sp- phone on speaker, and Atsushi, being afraid of making anyone upset, did what he was told. Hey, Octagawa. Atsushi managed to answer once he got the phone on speaker. You could hear Octagawa sigh from the other end of the phone before answering. This is about our damn party. This damn party our organizations are having to a sore piece, right? The man asked, slightly annoyed. Atsushi could almost feel the older roll his eyes over the phone. Y- yes, uh, Atsushi s- squeaked out, cursing himself internally for stuttering before continuing to talk. Does I told me I had to work with you. What have you been told? The tiger boy managed to, s- managed to answer without stuttering this time, calling it a win since Rampo was in the room watching watching and reading his every move. There was a sigh over the phone as Atsushi started to mess with his hands under the table, trying to hide his anxiousness from the only other person in the room. I've already picked out I've already picked out a menu. We're going to have the party tonight. Be there in thirty minutes, where Tiger. Before Atsushi could answer, Octagawa had already hung up the phone. Atsushi sighs as he taps the home button on his phone and looking up at Rumpo. Done. Are you? Atsushi cuts off his sentence when he sees Rumpo with his glasses on. Rumpo, the teen asks cautiously. Why are you wearing your glasses? The older one of the two just sighs as he takes off his glasses and walks over to Atsushi, placing a hand on his shoulder. It's okay to be vulnerable, Rumpo says as he looks at Atsushi in the eyes. At this, Atsushi tilts his head, confused. At Rompo. The other just sighs as he takes his hand off Atsushi's shoulder. You haven't figured it out yet, huh? Rompo questions, his voice sounding softer than normal as he looks at Atsushi. This only manages to confuse Atsushi more as Rompo backs up when Atsushi's phone goes off. That's probably the sex from Octagawa telling you where to go. 
Rampo states plainly, before walking back over to his desk with a small smile on his face. Answer she sighed as he checked the phone, seeing that it was, in fact, in fact a text from Dr. Gower. Unknown. This is Dr. Gower. Meet me at the bar on 5th Street in 30 minutes. Getting up from his seat, after he puts the phone in his pocket, he walks over to the door. Rampo? Answer she asked before leaving, looking over his shoulder. If Dr. Gower does end up killing me, tell Kyoki she was the best little sister ever. Answer she says as he turns his head straight before walking out of the office. Once he, the door closes behind Atsushi, Rampo laughs to himself with the office now empty. If those two ever get together, Dazai owes me a lot of money, he says with a large smirk on his face. Turning the corner, Octagao Atsu- comes in view. Atsushi quickly makes his way over to the man as he looks looking at his phone. Two minutes early, Atsushi whispers out as he stops in front of Octagawa, panting heavily. As Atsushi looks up at the man, Octagawa frowns before scoffing. It's better to be here at least ten minutes before an appointment. Octagawa hisses out, staring down at the younger, clearly disappointed. Atsushi stands up fully as he recovers from all the running he just had to do. I had to run all the way over, Dr. Gower, Atsushi says loudly as he walks closer to Dr. Gower. The agency is over seven kilometers away. You should be happy I even made it on time. The team almost shouts as he tries to make himself intimidating. Dr. Gower rolls his eyes as he stifles a laugh. Dr. Gower manages to keep his calm, though, as he turns his back to Atsushi and walks into the bar. Hey, you can't just ignore me, Atsushi says as he chases the mafioso into the building. Atsushi ends up sighing when he doesn't get a reply from Okagawa and looks around to see the floor covered with lots of boxes. Did did you bring all these here by yourself? Atsushi questions as he looks at the mafioso. Said mafioso just laughs as he walks over to one of the boxes. Yeah, that's the perks of having a useful ability. Octagawa jabbed a response quickly as he started to grab the base of the Christmas tree, with Shomon grabbing more than five branches in its teeth. Atsushi just scoffs as he goes to the other end of the room and grabs the first thing out, out of the first box he grabs. Why is there a nativity scene in this box? Atsushi questions as he picks up a baby Jesus. Octagawa just scoffs as he answers without looking at the other. Believe it or not, we're human too. We have beliefs just like you do. Atsushi sighs as he turns back and starts putting out the nativity scene on the table sli- on a table slightly to the side. So, Atsushi Atsu asks after a few minutes of silence. Octagawa lets out a hum of affirmation, letting Atsushi know that he was listening. Are you religious? He completes his question, tiptoeing, not tiptoeing around the subject. He knows that religion is a very hard topic to preach, but Atsushi was just, cu- was just too curious. Octagawa gives an audible laugh before, he's a- before he answers. Me? No, I don't relate to any of that. He states plainly as Atsushi nods, accepting it before the room goes into an awkward silence. It stays like that for a while until At- Octagawa finishes the tree and his side of the room, and walks over to Atsushi, sighing in disappointment. You really call that festive? Octagawa says, fixing things right above Atsushi's shoulder. Atsushi looked up to see Octagawa right above him, and his cheeks slightly redden as he looks back down. I've never had a Christmas before. Atsushi says softly, trying to make everything okay. You're hopeless, Octagawa states as he corrects the mistake Atsushi is currently making, sweating his hands away. Hey! Atsushi, Atsushi squeaks out as he looks over his shoulder. What are you doing? What was I doing wrong now? Octagawa just sighs as he doesn't answer, simply putting the batteries in the right way before turning it on, making sure it works. Atsushi 
as she continued to watch man as he effortless, effortless, effortlessly moves from one side of the room to the other. Is there anything I could help with? As she asks, with Octagel sighing, he just turns his head to answer. Just don't be so stupid, Jinko. Octagel sa- says. Uh, uh, Octagel says, obliv- Octagawa oblivious Octagawa's uh, Octagawa states blushing uh, of obvi- oblivious to Atsushi's blushing from behind him. Atsushi nods as he says at Octagawa in awe as he put as he watches him perfectly pick up put the batteries in in the min- in all the mini light up Christmas trees along the edges of the room, redoing what took Atsushi an hour in five minutes. Are you just going to keep staring or are you going to be helpful? The mafioso asked with a small smirk on his lips that the other one couldn't see. As she nods quickly, this time walking over to the big Christmas tree in the centre of the room, grabbing some decorations and carefully putting them on the tree. The room goes back to being silent, only the sounds of ball balls being grabbed from the box and heavy breathing coming from Atsushi, clearly anxious. Atsugawa turns around once Atsu- at Atsushi once he had finished everything to see Atsushi shaking quite heavily. You okay, Jinko? Atsushi jumped, causing him to drop the glass bauble he was holding. Luckily, Atsugawa had fast reflexes and quickly called Rashomon to grab the bauble before it hit the floor. Atsugawa sighs as he walks closer to Atsushi. What are you scared for? He asks as he stops in front of him. Atsushi takes a few deep breaths before shaking his head. It's it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Atsushi said softly, taking the bauble from Rashomon and placing it on the tree. Octagawa sighs and face as he face palms, grabbing onto Atsushi's shoulder. Don't be stupid, Jinko, there's clearly something wrong. Atsugawa states as he turns Atsushi to face him. As Atsushi gets turned around, he blushes at how close he is to the mafioso. Octagawa holds both his shoulders, staring straight into his eyes, making Atsushi heat up more. You're blushing? Octagawa asks, now with a small blush of his, on his own on his face. The two just stare at each other, their blushes getting darker the longer they stare at e- in each other's eyes. The two of them start moving closer to each other, forgetting the world around them. The eyes never meet, leaving each other's. I I think I like you. Atsushi said softly with a soft smile as they got closer. Octagawa smiles genuinely for the first time in front of Atsushi as he responds. I like you too. Atsugawa says confident in his answer. They both finally, cl- they both close their eyes as they close the distance. The two of them share a quick, soft kiss, holding each other in each other in in, a bra- in an embrace, smiling at each other for a couple of seconds. Merry Christmas to us, I guess. Hey everyone, thanks for reading that w- with me. That was day one, Hearts to Glow, A Christmas Kiss. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, another Shin Sokoku fan fiction. Uh, well, that's if I write it all tomorrow. Who knows how long it will take because... It literally took me eight hours to write this one, and it's only 3,400 words. God help me. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, uh, you can access everything on my Patreon. Uh, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and make sure to take care of yourself. I will put an hour on you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.